What's going on, guys? Filmy Tin is here. Uh, gonna be sending some cards later this week to Justin Bellinger, uh, Bowman1951, and I have been using him for a few months now. He does a great job, although we have yet to receive our submission results the first time, uh, but hopefully we'll get those soon. And um, yeah, I figured I'd share some of the cards that I'll be submitting, or all of the cards I'll be submitting. I looked through all of these already, um, inspected the surface with my good eye, my dominant vision. Didn't use any magnification yet, but I probably will eventually. Um, the surface was what I was most concerned with since most of these are chrome cards. Bowman Chrome and Topps Chrome cards are included. And... Um, a lot were eliminated because of scratches, um, severe refractor lines, indentations, or dimples. Uh, but these are the survivor survivors. I uh, have about 20 cards. So first one, I think this might have been pack pulled. Julio Rodriguez. And um, he's a top five guy in the 2019 Bowman product. So don't know a whole lot about him. Uh, there is a blog, uh, um, and uh, Dave's Cards A61, David Bradford knows about them too. I think it's like slab stocks or something like that. And they were talking about his potential future value, um, about how he could be a guy to buy low on right now. The concerns with him, he's got more raw power potential than Juan Soto, but he does hit the ball into the ground a lot and probably his biggest flaw is that he pulls the ball a lot. So teams will be able to shift him fairly easy if he doesn't adjust. But still fairly young. I think he's about 19. So that is Julio Rodriguez, number one. This one I picked up in a trade at a recent show. Very, very difficult to get this in a high grade. Even a BGS 9.5, never mind a PSA 10. Um, autograph looks sweet, but deciding to send it a PSA 10. Going for um, hopefully a bigger value enhancer. If I get the, the 10 back, um, really clean card, top left corner might not be perfect, but everything else scream submit, um, hard to find these perfectly centered, hard to find these without any surface flaws. And it does have no surface flaws. So figured it's worth a chance, even in a PSA nine, that's fine. Um, Didi's a good guy to buy low on right now, I think. I purchased this same card last year after the season was over. So in the cold off season, it's usually cold for, for most players, um, modern players at least. I purchased a BGS 9 for about 30 bucks, and I thought that was a steal at the time. And this one's in much better shape. So 10 bucks, uh, that's how much it cost me um, in the trade. So very happy to pick this one off and submit it. These ones... Um, some Cody Bellinger cards. Usually I would never buy Don Russ. I opened a Don Russ product once in my life and I never will again. Um, no, no team logos. Um, look, look at that blank helmet. Just looks kind of stupid. And, um, the products don't retain their value that well either. Um, so yeah. But the reason why I have these cards is because Tom DePaulo was looking to get rid of some of his modern cards. Uh, he broke them years ago, got them really cheap, and he's looking to take the earnings he gets from these cards and invest them into stuff that he PCs, which is more of the, the vintage stuff, um, 80s stuff, and earlier. Uh, he's a set collector himself, set builder himself. So these were two of the cleaner purple refractors that I got. Um, they have some dots here, but that's actually part of the card. So confused me at first. So I think I have a pretty good chance there at tens. Tops Chrome, Ronald Acuna. I had a few of these. This was the nicest one. Didn't really have the surface defects of the other one. So his hobby is doing really well right now. His performance is sort of slowing down. So hopefully he continues to keep that up to keep his hobby strong. And then in the last submission, I submitted 17 of my 63 total Juan Soto HMT 55s. And, you know, that's about 25%. Topps Chrome cards, as long as they don't have, like, surface issues, um, and I know that's a vague statement, you're going to have a really good chance of getting a 10. Corners, 90% of the time, are going to be good. Edges, probably 95% of the time, are going to be good. Um, centering, some of these aren't perfect, but this might be the worst 
the most poorly centered cards, see the W, the tips kind of cut off. But I've seen PSA 10s, and I spoke about this with uh, Chris Hasten because he was going through the same dilemma of whether or not he should submit in a slightly off-centered Juan Soto HMT 55 to PSA. I said, I think you should roll the dice if the surface is flawless otherwise, or if the other subgrades are, you know, good. But I, I, I still think I have a really great chance of, even if I get 75% tens out of these, I think there's like nine of them. So even if I get six or seven as tens, I consider that a success. Because um, I'm getting a big value bump from those tens. All right. So this is another card I picked up from Tom DePaulo, fellow YouTuber. It doesn't really create videos, but he does comment every once in a while. And um, I thought this was a pretty nice example. It's just the rookie debut, but... The HMT 99, so the, the the Topps Chrome Update Bellingers are selling for more. I don't know if that's going to be a permanent thing. I guess it might reverse at least somewhat, if not fully. But for now, this is a good card to, to submit, I think, even though it is the rookie debut. If you think you have a, a solid chance of getting a 10. Uh, I had a bunch of the Wander Francos, the, the base cards, of course. If you've seen uh, many of my previous videos, I've talked about and showed some of his autographs. And um, of the base cards, this was the one with the cleanest surface. So I figured I'd give this one a chance. Centering might not be perfect, but it'd be cool to get uh, one Franco back graded because the last, the only other autograph that I still have is, uh, is not submission worthy, in my opinion. Here's a Pete Alonzo. So this card, Raw, is actually worth about seven bucks. And I was surprised because when I broke this product last November or December, I didn't even put this in a sleeve. I kind of just threw it back in the box. I intended to throw all of these cards away. I hadn't heard of him. I hadn't heard of Alex Kirilov. And a lot of that was my stupidity because they were top 50 prospects. He might be, he might have been like a marginal, like on the border of top 15. Kirilov was probably higher than that. Kristen Pache was probably around or maybe, you know, in between the two, but, um, that's the danger in throwing away prospect cards because you never really know who's going to kind of bubble up and who's not. So this card is really nicely centered. If it's raw worth seven bucks, um, then I think it's definitely worth submitting. If you think you can get a 10 out of it because that would probably bump it up to 20 to 25 plus. Um, Juan Soto. Got a bunch of these. Uh, I bought a lot, actually, of 20, and I sold them, almost all of them, at a recent show because I did the eye test on all of them, and none of them are submission-worthy. But this one I pulled out of a pack. So the guy that I bought that lot from knew what he was doing, probably kept or submitted the the ones in better condition. But I pulled this out of a jumbo pack, actually, um, on video, and um, put it in a, um, a card saver right away because I knew it was, you know, this one I'd actually even consider, or in some cases, if it's like so this beautiful, I'll even consider sending it to BGS, but it's too damn expensive to send out single cards. I don't know if there's like a, there probably is some sort of bulk discount thing, but no, nobody I know does that. So I don't know. It's just more cost effective for me to send this off with all the other cards to a PC, PC, PSA submission group. This one, this one's going to be a little tough. It's got a few scratches on it. Um, I was able to, 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 to wipe off some with a, a rag, but um, I don't know if I'm going to get a 10. At first, I thought this was really uh, really a, 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 ten to, a strong 10 candidate and in very nice shape and top shape, but um, close to pristine condition it appeared. But then when I started to look at it more and more and closer and under, under some good lighting, I uncovered some refractor type lines, I believe, um, maybe some minor scratches, but you know what? If I get this in a nine, that's fine. Still a really nice card. He's tearing up AAA right now. He's probably going to get called up within the next few months. I mean, you're looking at a team that's trying to compete. Um, I forget who they're playing at second base right now. Uh, Travis Shaw, I know they were aiming to maybe play him there this year, and he's been struggling a bit, and I'm sure they have other options. Uh, but I mean, there's no reason to keep down a, a great athlete like this for long when you're trying to compete in a pretty tough division because St. Louis is playing well and the Cubs are playing better. Um, really nice. It'd be really nice to get this in a 10. It'd be worth almost 300 bucks, I think. But, uh, and a nine, you know, it'd be worth about 200. I think I paid like 175, 185, got it in a trade. 
Cody Bellinger, here's a refractor. Showed you guys the purples earlier. This is this also came from Tom DePaulo. This has a really strong chance. So thank you, Tom, for giving me so many candidates. Definitely takes care of his cards better than I do. Uh, this one's interesting. So got this for a couple bucks from JT, Triple Crown 24, fellow YouTuber, great guy. Um, I don't know. I'm sort of torn between whether I should submit this or not. The bottom right corner is like a little eh, but I don't know. I think it might have like a 25 to 30 percent chance of coming back as a 10. And he's not uh, performing well right now. He, he had a really hot start, but I think he has a chance to see a um, a major uptick in his hobby prices too as the year goes on or as the years go on. And then here's a Galeber Torres. This one's in really nice shape. Uh, the PSA 10s of the Topps update are more expensive than the PSA 10 Topps Chromes. So that's why I'm submitting this one and not a Chrome because I do have some of his Chrome cards too. Uh, and the reason for that is because the paper stock is just a lot like more difficult to get the um, you know the paper cards in those top grades. But I guess we'll see with that one. So to recap... 10, 9 probably, 10, 9 probably, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 9 probably, and then 10. Those are my guesses, so we'll see how we do when the submission comes back. All right, thanks guys. Hopefully you liked you saw. Like, comment, subscribe, do you gotta do.